It's time for the sandbox news. This week there's a ton of editor updates. Sounds sound more realistic. There's new project settings, updated entity list, and editor preferences. I've also updated my zombie game. There's a new blue jumpsuit. Last week we saw the orange prisoner outfit, and this new blue jumpsuit is a reskin of that. So as we can see, it's a blue jumpsuit. It almost looks like a mechanics jumpsuit. On it, it says SB selector. I don't really know what that's supposed to mean. And it looks like they have a SCP key card. This is a level two access card. I was going to spawn in an SCP to make a, a joke, but it's so small. Look at that. You can't even see it. Wow. It's terrifying. There have been some tweaks and improvements to sounds. I'm not going into the specifics, but the sound parameters for different surfaces have been tweaked. More surfaces have actually been given sound parameters. Previously, I think a large portion of the surfaces in Sandbox were just using the default sound setting, which I assume were probably concrete, so most rooms sounded like big concrete boxes. Actually, I don't think it's working right now. I don't know why that is. It sounded better yesterday, but now everything kind of just sounds the same. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Maybe restarting Sandbox would fix that. It's all still a work in progress. There's new project settings. So last week, I believe we only had this collision matrix, but now we have three new tabs to look at. There's game setup, physics, and compiler. Under game setup, it looks like these are all the settings we've had before. This is now where you would change the max players, maps, networking type, and your leaderboards. In the physics tab, there's new settings for world, Rubicon, and advanced. So these are the default physics settings for props in your game. Here you can change the physics time scale, the gravity, including a gravity direction, and the air density. Now you could always change these settings in your game's code, and you can still do that. But now we have a nice spot to very clearly see all these settings and change the defaults if you don't want to code it. Rubicon is the physics engine that Sandbox currently uses. We can set the simulation mode to either be discrete or continuous. I don't know for sure, but I assume continuous would be default physics, and discrete would mean you would have to manually trigger each physics step. There are also advanced settings. Now, these are kind of a mystery. Uh, I'm not going to speculate on what they are. There's also compiler settings. Now, these are more super advanced settings. You're probably never going to need to touch these. You can also change the release mode. So I actually didn't know this was a thing, but apparently when you upload your game, it runs a more advanced and more optimized compile. So I assume your published game will run slightly better than the game when you're developing it. There's also new editor preferences. So currently it's just your default code editor, which I only have Visual Studio installed, so it's only showing me that option. However, there is also now support for VS Code and Writer. You can also change the default add-on location. Previously, this was in your Steam folder in Sandbox add-ons, but now I believe it's been changed to be in the Documents folder, which is more in line with other game engines like Unity and Unreal. So now there's a Sandbox Projects folder alongside your Unity and Unreal projects. Now, I thought this was a weird change at first, but after thinking about it, it makes a lot of sense because Sandbox is basically a game engine. It's not really modding. You're coding full games here, just like you would in Unity or Unreal. So I think this change makes sense. Of course, you can still use the Sandbox add-ons folder. I'm probably still gonna keep using that, at least for now. The entity list has been improved. So now we can see different tabs with game entities and map entities, and you can toggle them. So on Construct, we can see there's almost 800 map entities and they're all categorized. There's constraints. So these are four things like this metal gate here. It uses a physics hinge. There's destruction, which is for the breakable glass. There's effects, fog, gameplay, which includes all the props in the map. There's light entities, navigation, player spawn points, triggers, and then there's uncategorized. So don't really know what these are. These are just mystery entities. We can also see all the game entities. So active pawn, this is a player, clients, this is me, glass shards. So this is interesting. I guess the unbroken glass is considered a map entity, but the broken shards of glass are game entities. So this is a very neat change, very convenient instead of having one gigantic unorganized list. I updated my NPC zombie game a bit more. I made new skins for the zombies. Now you can see they have new glowing eyes. It's terrifying. It's like I'm actually being chased. 
by a cursed evil zombie. Unfortunately, there's a weird bug in Sandbox where sometimes the skin doesn't get applied and you just get regular people mixed in with the zombies. It's so strange. But I'm sure that'll get fixed eventually. I also made some new weapon systems. I bought some nice high quality weapon models from an asset store and I put them in the game. I also set up some camera shake. So when you shoot your guns, your camera will move a little bit. It's especially noticeable on things like the shotgun or this rifle. So there's a big kick up when you fire it. I think it makes the game a lot more fun. And right now, I think I actually have the coolest weapon system in all of Sandbox. Currently, I think there's eight weapons. Uh, don't mind the outlines are broken in Sandbox right now. Some melee weapons, the new pistol, an AKM, a F1, uh, MP5. I think this gun is called the M1A and there's a shotgun. I still have to set up the animations for this one. They're a bit interesting, but this is very cool. A lot better than the old placeholder weapons that I had from Rust. Also, I think I have a couple more weapon models that I haven't ported in yet. I think there's a Magnum, a sniper rifle, and a couple others. So we'll see those in the future. I also made a very basic custom chat bar. So nothing special here. However, it does show your health color in your chat when you're talking. So if you're on low HP, you'll have a red name. Also events like when you die or get incapacitated show up in the chat too. Although for some reason, there's a weird bug where the chat box doesn't actually work. When the game's released and you're playing it publicly, it only works in the developer mode for some reason. It's a weird bug that I'll have to look into. And finally, I set up random facial expressions on your character's health bar. So as a reminder, it shows you your character's face on your health bar, which I think is really cool. Well, that's it. That's all the sandbox news. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you to my Patreon supporters for allowing me to buy these cool gun models.